Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video going over this ecosphere I've uh, got here. So, um, this particular one is made of a new housing that I've never tried before. This is a boiling flask. This particular one is 2,000 milliliter. So I decided to go fairly large. Um, the base is made of a female to female, five inch or six inch couple. Um, not sure which one. I'd, I'd say five, just looking at it. Um, it's been a while since I bought that, so sorry, forgot. Um, and then this is just a plasma ball base that I just put in here. The reason I have to use this is because the beaker actually extends down to uh, farther than the this little black part will extend, so I needed to have an extension on that. Um, I'm going to paint this at some point, but I'm going to put some switches in it. Uh, eventually so so that will be an update to come hopefully the lamp is just a simple little LED it's got a couple of little LEDs in there I picked it up at Lowe's for like I don't know ten bucks um, just a cheap little thing it's got a little switch and I got a little timer over there uh, so I have that it on for about 14 hours to promote plant growth um, I'm planning on taking it apart and mounting this into the side of the inside the side of the base, along with the switch and the plug, uh, so it'll be a little bit more contained. So I'm going to pick up another one of these because this is actually supposed to be my desk lamp. Uh, so yeah, that pretty much goes over the construction of it. I'll put a link in the description for the globe, and if I can find the light, I'll put that in as well. Obviously, the PVC you can get anywhere. Hold those from Depot, even a plumbing shop. This, you'll have to improvise. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, so, you, yeah, you'll have to improvise that. You can either use a smaller PVC couple or, you know, just, just come up with something creative. So, now on to the, the heart and soul of it, if you will. The inside. So, the water I got was from a pond along with all the critters and the top. So I'll just start at the top and make my way down. So, number one, I decided to leave an air gap. I left this for two reasons. One, thermal expansion. Um, my room gets, well, even at the different times of the years, different time of the year, it, um, well, I can, I'm sorry, I can't talk today. At different times of the year, uh, there's different seasons. So it, it heats and cools. If you know anything about... Uh, pressure, you'll know PV over T. It's a fairly um, well-known equation that says that as as temperature increases, pressure also increases, and vice versa. So I left this in here because air can be compressed a bit. Liquid typically does not compress hardly at all. So I left that there for thermal expansion because I have a cork at the bottom, and I really don't want that to blow out because if that blows out, then that's it's going to cause a problem. It's going to leak all over the place and make a huge mess not to mention everything in here is probably going to die so left it for that and also I left that as an air reserve because during the day plants produce oxygen they uh, get the light they intake CO2 and other nutrients and water exchange electrons and export or output oxygen however at night they go through cellular respiration which requires oxygen for them to survive it's a natural thing all plants do um, so what I'm hoping this does is allows the oxygen to, number one, be dissolved into the water from like the plants down there. And for these little guys up here, this is a weed called duckweed, uh, to produce oxygen outside, so in the air, store it, and then through the night have that dissolve either back into the water or have them use that. So... So that's what the air pocket's all about, and also it, it provides an area for these things to stuck weed to thrive. Um, I actually did have a couple little water bugs in there, a little like fleas and whatever else, so I think they're still in there, they're just too small to see. But that's the top of it. So this duckweed is really common. People actually grow it um, for like chicken feed and stuff, and, and fish feed. So it's extremely common. It grows practically in every pond with slow moving or stagnant water. Um, so that was I just got that from my local pond. 
Uh, then we move down. You can see it has some roots in there. Lights too bright side of that. Let's see if I can. Yeah, you can kind of see the roots in there. Um, so that grows nice little, nice little roots for the critters to eat. And then moving in here, I got a little stick in there for moss to grow on and little critters to grow or to crawl on. And then I have a plant. That plant I got from the pet store. If you're curious about the name, there's the name of it. And I also have some dwarf grass in there. Um, you can kind of see it down there at the bottom right of the plant. So that's I'm hoping that'll just fill in everywhere. Because uh, something is eating these plants. I'm not sure if it's the shrimp or what, but something is in fact eating it. So I'm hoping it'll transfer to the grass and not this, because this is the main oxygen source. Uh, other than that, I have some rocks in there. Just found them from around my yard. You can kind of see where I got them right there by the gutter. Uh, just the usual, I believe it's quartz rock, um, river rock, or whatever. It's, you know, go digging in your backyard. You'll find some rocks like that. And you can see it's grown some algae on it, which is nice because that'll provide some food. Uh, now, as far as living critters are concerned that I've identified so far, we got. I'll start from the smallest. Well, I can't start from the smallest. There's obviously all kinds of bacteria in here, but smallest visible. I don't know if you can. No, you can't. You can't see it on the camera. But there's there's little gnats, little water fleas around here, like absolutely microscopic, uh, on the side. So those those just eat algae and whatnot and help clean things up a bit. Uh, moving on, we have. Well, here's a good shot of the shrimp. We have two little shrimp here. There's a whole bunch of them. You can see them all over that plant. Uh, these things absolutely thrive, like, anywhere. Anywhere at all. I mean, these things just take over. Which is nice, because I, I like them. They're, they're kind of interesting. Uh, so we have those shrimp just everywhere. Um, and they multiply crazy. And then we have... Give it a little shake here, and you'll see. There you go, there's one. That little thing buzzing around. That is a little water... It's either a little water flea or a little water bug. I'm not quite sure, but we, uh, we've we got a bunch of them in there. Probably ten or so. Um, there's another little critter. That's one of the things I was talking about earlier that you couldn't see. Uh, there's another shrimp. And uh, the beetle. Uh, the beetle will show up in a minute. Um, I have a snail. Not quite sure what type it is. It's not an apple, and it's not the... Um, forgot the name of the other one, but I'm not, I'm sorry, it's on terrible camera work today, sorry. Um, not quite sure the name of this guy, but he's laying eggs everywhere. In fact, it's actually he and she, since snails are, uh, like, both. Uh, so we've got eggs everywhere. Those ones look like they're just about to hatch as well. Let's see if we can focus on those. Come on. Focus. Well, it's, it's not cooperating, but there are, in fact, eggs everywhere. So I'm hoping to have a couple new snails in here soon. And there's some more shrimp. This is extremely hard to capture because it's like a globe and the focus is exemplified. Um, and then somewhere in here we have the beetle. I'm not sure where he went. He's probably up top somewhere. Where did he go? Um, give it a shake, he'll probably come flying out. Where the heck did he go? Anyway, we got a big, uh, they're called the Great Water, or Great Diving Water Beetle, I believe is what they're called. Um, but they're really cool because they have an air pocket on their belly, and they dive down and that's how they breathe. Uh, that's another reason I have the air pocket. It's for critters like that that rely on that. So that that's pretty cool. That guy, you'll he'll, he'll, he'll probably see him swimming around as I'm talking here. Um, and then I have something that I have no idea what it is. Um, let's see what I can find. It's usually at the top. Yeah, there it is. See that little worm thing? It, it almost looks like a caterpillar. I have no idea what that is. Um, I'm going to try to focus on it. I have absolutely no idea what it is. It's got a little mouth. And on the other end, it has little, looks like a little fan, almost like a bunch of little hairs. And that's how it, atta it like attaches itself to the side. And it appears to be eating the uh, duckweed. Um, 
I'm not sure if it eats the live ones or the dead ones or the dying ones, but it spends a lot of time up there and at night it actually crawls like on the sides up here. Um, I, I would guess that that's what's eating this plant down here. I've, I've never seen the shrimp eat a plant. Um, I mean, the shrimp do spend a lot of time on it, but I've never seen them actually like eat it. There's a beetle. Where's the beetle go? There he is. He's getting some air. There he goes. Goes back down. You can kind of see the air bubble on his stomach there. A little silver. Keep this focus on him. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what that caterpillar thing is. I, I looked up water caterpillar, duckweed, eating worm. Um, absolutely no idea what it's called. I found the beetle. I found the shrimp. The shrimp are called scuds. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what that thing is. So if you guys are still watching this video, I'm sorry this video is so long. But if you are still watching this and you have any idea what that is, um, feel free to let me know. Because I am drawing a blank here. And I'm really curious to see if it turns into like, you know, it wouldn't turn into a dragonfly because the dragonfly larvae looks different, but... I'd be really curious to see if that turns into something else that's supposed to be, like, outside. Here's a good shot of the beetle. Oh. So you can see... Come on, camera focus. Um, you can kind of see the air pocket. I'm sorry, this camera's terrible. You can kind of see the air pocket beneath them there. But this guy, like, absolutely spazzes. If you bump the container, this guy just flies around. And, yeah, he survived quite a while now. It's been... It's been almost a month for him. Along with the shrimp. The shrimp are just troopers. So, anyway, that is my little ecosphere. I will probably have updates on this. Um, if you guys show enough interest. I'm sorry that this video was so long. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff I needed to cover. So, there you go. Updates to come. Hopefully shorter next time now that I have, uh, you know, stuff explained. If you guys are interested in building one of these and have any questions, feel free to let me know. I've done a ton of research. Um, and also, if you have any specific questions about plants, because I'm not that up to date on the plants as far as, like, oxygen and stuff is concerned, I would check out... Uh, YouTube channel The Green Machine. They have a website too, Green Machine Aquariums. Uh, that guy is absolutely phenomenal. I watch some videos on him, and uh, this guy does like crazy, crazy, crazy aquatic planting for aquariums. So be sure to check him out if you got any questions about plants. Um, I'm sure you could like send him a message, and he'll probably uh, or go to their website. Their website has all kinds of information about plants. So check them out. Uh, I'm not sponsoring them. I'm just you know giving you guys a good uh good source to look into so anyway updates to come i will next update will probably be with me in my new apartment so uh yeah see you guys then